Greetings, friends, enemies. This is Black Light Cyberspace Ministry. Dropping some seeds on you. Yesterday, uh, I was speaking on uh, rulership. You know, are we ready to rule yet? I believe we are, with the little bit of uh, brothers we got. You see, it's some people in, the, uh, if you want to say the conscious, black conscious uh, community that feel that the rest of the black population won't wake up until the catastrophe hits and until uh, King Alfred plan is in effect, full effect. So they feel like, uh, you know, that's what it's going to have to take for them to wake up when half of y'all are destroyed or either put in concentration camps, you know. Just like when uh, Moses was talking to Pharaoh, telling him to let his people go. And uh, a whole lot of plagues hit Pharaoh. Pharaoh still didn't want to let the people go, right? So, uh, the story goes that Moses ushered the people out and uh, Pharaoh was hot on their trail. And they crossed the Red Sea, and when the Red Sea parted, right? You know all of this is allegorical, right? Fable-like, you know? And so uh, we are applying it to what's happening now. So when the, the uh, seas opened up, Moses got all his people across. As soon as Pharaoh pursued them, it was... You know, taking advantage of the sea being parted. And he rode right into the trap of, of the Most Allah. You know? And uh, he got drowned. But before he drowned, it, he said, I believe in the God of Moses. So, you think this going to happen a second time? In order for people to wake up, to believe in the God or the Most High, I think it might happen like that. But say if it does happen like that. Don't forget Moses... And them wandering in the wilderness for 40, I mean, for how, how, how long was that? 40 years. And uh, he, they went, they started acting like their old self, started taking on the, the religion of Pharaoh. And they was away from, uh, away from Pharaoh's jurisdiction. You know, it was out there in the wilderness trying to find a spot for themselves, you know. And Allah gave them manna from heaven, right? And they didn't appreciate it, you know. And they still, you know, they still turned back. It was hard for them to come out of it, you know. Well, the old generation had to die off for the new generation to come in, you know, and take charge. So all y'all, all y'all listening to me now, that means that y'all babies, or maybe y'all babies' babies might be the one to really find out 
what the real deal is about themselves and about the supreme being. Uh, that means that y'all, you know, y'all gonna go. And one reason, because you waiting on everybody else to wake up before you make any kind of moves for yourself. You know, uh, it's enough, enough uh, people to make moves to rule. Uh, we can't wait on wait on uh, nobody else. We gotta sp start putting it in place. So at least uh, y'all, the ones up under me, you know, the ones in their thirties and forties, might have a a little more grip on rulership than you know, and what they need to do. You know, I mean, they need to have a grip on rulership. You know, don't be grabbing at it, but grab it and grip it and hold on tight, you know. So, you got to start somewhere, you know. So, we might as well start now. Because you can see that uh, it's a lot of us ain't, ain't woke yet. And they ain't gonna wake up. So that's why I'm sending out these ideas. You know. And if y'all might think, well, they free. They must not be worth nothing. Nope. You ain't gotta ask nobody permission to uh break open a new idea. You know, you ain't gotta pay nobody off. See, that's gangster stuff, man. That's a, that's what we call the shakedown. You know, when you know you you got a business and the mafia come in or some, some gangsters come in and say, uh, you know, uh, you gotta pay taxes to us or you gotta pay uh, operation money or insurance to us. Because if you don't, something might happen to your joint and you and your whole family. So every time they come in, they call that the protection racket, right? So what else have they legalized that was once was a racket? Well, uh, I mean, alcohol was once uh, uh, a racket and they legalized it. You know, uh, and showing uh, protection plan, uh, you know, what we now call insurance was once a racket, now it's legalized. So they legislated all the gangsters' hustles and made it lawful and made it unlawful, like counterfeiting. Counterfeiting was a, was a hell of a racket, you know. But they made it legal. So we, you ain't gotta, we ain't gotta ask nobody permission, you know. That they don't have no standard. How a gangster gonna be, you know? Only re, what he got is, you know, he got that, uh, he got artillery. He got the weapons of mass destruction over us, you know. But like I say, man, uh, the Nation of Islam is the best example. They came in on the Nation of Islam's temple over here in Detroit and trying to house them. And uh, they got shook up. Police, you know, one of them died. Brothers, they just had little bumps and bruises, but they didn't get shot because these brothers was on the righteous, on the righteous vibration. You know, they was in within their rights, and one time they had Master Farad on the, on the stand. 
which this story don't get told much. And uh, the police that was, uh, he went to court. And the, the guy was on the, on the uh, I believe he was on the witness stand or the police testifying and he called a heart attack. Or it could have been afterwards. But anyway, he called a heart attack messing with Master Farah Muhammad. Now he was using mental telepathy. He had he he had that mind power. That's why he's Master Farah Muhammad. You know, you say Allah came in the person of Master Farah Muhammad. See, y'all don't know about them, them stuff, but you know, um, half of the old pioneers is gone. Even Mister Farrakhan, he might not know about it because he he relatively young to when all that was happening. You know, this was happening back in the 30s, you know, when Master Farah was here, you know. Uh, he hadn't gone yet, so he left in 33. But my grandmama told me, she told me she met him, you know. She said that uh, he came down on Haston Street, or around Haston Street, selling, uh, uh, Call that a tactical tactia. I, I'm, I'm murdering words, you know. I can't, I can't pronounce some of these words, but tapestry, yeah, tapestry, uh, a painting or or picture made out of uh, cloth, you know. And uh, he sold one to her. And one time I asked her, I seen it. It was a. I, I think I got one here. I'm going to show it to you. Hold, 